This video is an overview of a dynamic PFSense whitelisting application I built using ColdFusion, Putty, and Plink. Now the need for this application arose from a relationship I have with a client who had several VichyDAO boxes behind a PFSense firewall. Now traditionally the best approach to hardening this type of network is to use the whitelist approach, which says we only allow approved IP addresses through the network, through the firewall. This works great, however in this situation this client had several at-home agents who were working off dynamic IP addresses. Uh, the dynamic IP addresses would often change sometimes more than once over a 24-hour period. Every time there was a change in the agent's IP address, it had to be updated in the firewall's whitelist in order to let them through. Now obviously this gets problematic the more agents you have and the more their IP addresses change. So we needed a solution and that solution had to have two major major parts or features. The first was that it would allow for the agent to authenticate against the network and instantly gain access to the network by adding their, their new IP address to the updated whitelist. And second, it had to be automated so there wouldn't have to be anybody touching or logging into PFSense to update the whitelist. At first I thought I could solve the problem using uh, just PFSense alone. And there are some tools in PFSense that will allow a, an alias whitelist to be updated uh, via a webhook. However, this process would only run once every 24 hours. Now, I thought about running it more, uh, but it just didn't seem like an elegant solution to me. So rather, I built uh, this solution, which uses a public authentication gateway for the agent to authenticate against. It checks for uh, an update in their IP address. If it sees an update in the IP address, then it runs some scripts against PFSense to update the configuration file in PFSense, flushes the cache, and then resets the tables. Um, so let's take a look at the application in practice, and then I'll show you uh, what was needed in order to rig PFSense to work with ColdFusion, Plink, and Putty. So here's the actual gateway. Uh, that our agents log into to do their work. And as you can see, it's not available to us right now because my IP address is not on the whitelist. In order to get on the whitelist, I'm gonna log into our public uh, authentication portal, which is our support site. And it's gonna immediately see that my IP address has been updated and let the agent know that they can now log in uh, to the system. And you can see now we're through the firewall and our agent can get to work. So let's take a look at how this is accomplished in PFSense. In PFSense, um, there's a tool called aliases, which allows you to create a list and then apply that list to your firewall rules as you move forward. So I created a, a whitelist for XTDirect. So this is the whitelist or the, the uh, list that ColdFusion is going to update in the configuration file for PFSense to update the IP addresses and allow new IP addresses into the network. Once we have our whitelist created in PFSense, then it gets applied to uh, a rule. So in this case, this is the port 80 or HTTP port, which allowed us to authenticate just now. So for our source, we say we'll let anybody on our whitelist uh, in and we'll let them into our asterisk server. And uh, the protocol was HTTP. So this is how it's done in the GUI, which is really straightforward. Just have to set this up once. Now, in order to get um, ColdFusion to be able to talk to PFSense, we used Putty. Uh, we actually used two tools. The first tool we used was Putty, which is an SSH client for Windows. And then we used Plink, which is a command line interface that interfaces with Putty, which is the tie which allows ColdFusion to talk to Putty and thereby talking to PFSense. Now, when you initially set up uh, your Putty, you need to do a couple things in order to streamline how uh, Putty talks to PFSense. There are a couple gotchas. The first thing you need to do is set up a saved session. In this case, I call it firewall. So you first create your saved session, save it, and then run it so you log in for the initial time into your, your PFSense uh, firewall. Uh, the first time you log in, it will create keys that allow this us uh, that, that allow this save session to authenticate directly, um, moving forward uh, as you run calls against it using ColdFusion. So that's kind of the per first step you need to do with Putty. The second step uh, is you need to log in to your PFSense firewall, and as you can see, I'm logged in as root here, and when you log in as root or admin. Uh, 
you're faced with this menu option in the CLI. Well, this menu option is great when, when you're working with it from the, uh, from the shell here, but um, when you're trying to run commands, this gets in the way of immediately executing those commands when you're pushing them over from Cold Fusion. So in order to get around this, you need to create a new user on the PFSense firewall. And in this case, I, call, I created one called Whitelist, which then you grant access to Wheel, and then you need to make sure that it has access, uh, execute access to the SH scripts that are needed on the, on the PFSense server in order to uh, manipulate the configuration.xml file. So let's go ahead and log into the shell, and we'll go into the configuration directory and I'll show you the files that are needed here and then I'll show you what's in those files here in a second. So as you can see in the configuration directory we have the config.xml file. Now this is the the file that um, dictates how pfSense runs. It dictates all the features and functionality of it but it's also where that whitelist lives uh, that we're going to update using cold fusion. And then there are three other files you can see here in red. We have a put config, which puts the configuration file over onto the Cold Fusion server. We have a git config, which pulls that XM file file back uh, onto pfSense. And then we have a reset tables.sh, uh, which resets the firewall rules, allowing that new IP address to come in. So let's take a look at those scripts here in a moment. Um, uh, the first thing I, I want you to look at is the uh, node that we need to change in the configuration file. Now, this is just a snippet from the configuration file for pfSense, but it's the snippet that we're going to be changing in Cold Fusion and updating in Cold Fusion in order to add or, or remove IP addresses from the whitelist. So you can see it's it's the alias node or an alias node, uh, and the name is IT, XT Direct Whitelist, and then here's the IP addresses, the detail. So this is the node you want to look for when you're uh, making your update. And then the three files that were added to the pfSense firewall are the put config, which puts the configuration file via FTP onto the Cold Fusion server, where it can then be manipulated by Cold Fusion. Uh, once Cold Fusion is manipulated, it sends another command to pfSense, which says get that file back or get that config file back. So again, it uses FTP to pull that confi configuration file back onto the pfSense firewall. And then we're going to do two commands which help us to reset uh, the firewall rules and apply the new whitelist to the firewall. Now, uh, these commands work just the same as if you are updating the GUI. It doesn't have any impact on the firewall. And again, it acts the same as updating a rule inside the GUI. Uh, so those are the pieces that are needed uh, for pfSense uh, on the firewall itself. Now let's take a look at the cold fusion code used to pull this off. Uh, the first thing we do is authenticate. I actually just do an authentication to make sure that it's the right server or the right, uh, well, in this case, the right server executing the script. And we do that just by uh, the IP address. So it has to be a certain IP address in order for the script to run. Uh, the next thing we do is lock this template so it can't be run concurrently, uh, which is a safety feature. So we're not doing a, any race constraints or trying to write a config um, at the same time on the pfSense server. Uh, and the first thing uh, that we execute here is uh, pushing the uh, config.xml file onto the confusion server. So we're using cfexecute to execute a plink command against the firewall and we're running the putconfig uh, sh file which you saw just a minute ago. Uh, Confusion then checks to make sure that the file got moved over uh, and then it parses it, updates that node uh, to add the new IP address. Uh, once that new configuration file is written, then we pull the configuration file back on the server by running this command of CS execute against plink to run the git config sh on the pfSense firewall. And then we run that last command to reset the firewall rules in pfSense. And then this is just some um, housekeeping stuff where I move the file, the old configuration file over to a history folder, uh, just in case we need to um, restore it later if something goes wrong, and then we delete the original file. So that's how it's uh, kind of all put together. 
uh, I'll make this code available to you. Uh, if you have any questions, please reach out to me and I'll try to answer them. Thanks.